Hello YouTube, Mewtwo here again. It's probably clear from the other videos on my channel, but I'm a bit of a fan of the Sega Master System. Not content with buying and playing the games, I like to make my own reproduction games too. And the reason for this is there are several games that either weren't released or had, say, Japanese games that, that got translated into English, and in some cases, like this one here, Game Gear games that have been ported over to the Sega Master System. The Game Gear was, of course, basically a portable Master System as it was, so it kind of lends itself to the process. And the reason why I chose to do Sonic Triple Trouble as a, as a reproduction is because I really enjoyed playing the Sonic games when I was younger, and I always hoped that the game would, would come out on a Master System, though it never did. And I decided to um, make my own physical kind of reproduction because it's nice to have the, the kind of completed copy sitting on your shelf beside the other games. And when making my reproductions, I decided I would go with the late Master System styling. So, for example, the grid, it's, it's very tightly packed or there, there's a high density in, in the number of lines. The area releases typically had far greater, or there was a lot more white space. And it also tends to have a lot more kind of space taken up with the, the artwork and the, the game logos. So I'll just flick it over here, and you can see there's the spine, again, in keeping with the, the late Master System releases. And then the back of the box. Um, one of the challenges in doing a reproduction is, of course, making it keep the kind of Master System feel, but kind of bringing it up to date. At least that's what I wanted to do with this. So I have a full English back, which I kind of based on a Sonic uh, triple Trouble Game Gear back, but I had to expand out the content because there was, in, in the European release, which is what I based it on, there wasn't as much English text. And for this reproduction, I actually decided to go and do a complete manual and catalogue and, you know, complete the set to make it look very much like what a game may could, might may be released by Sega if they were still releasing Master System games today. Now I have to say I found doing the manual very difficult and again sorry for the <laughs> shaking the camera a bit there but the, the manual took a lot of time and effort. It took longer to do the manual than it did to do everything else on the project combined. So just trying to get a closer look. I'll just move the box out of the way. Now, most Master System fans would be aware that Master System games tend to come with, a, with what they call a Sega game catalogue. And this usually catalogues upcoming games on the system, always containing the text, the ultimate challenge in games, because apparently it was. Um, it's very hard to make out in the camera, but you see Sonic Triple Trouble in the bottom left of, of the, the catalogue there. Essentially... I plan to um, to make most of these games, if not all of them, over time, and have a kind of complete set or a reasonably large set of of reproduction titles. So I'm sure I will probably do kind of update videos from time to time, kind of charting the progress of my reproductions as I'm moving through them. Um, there's quite a number of titles there, so on one hand, it seems. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll get through them, but given the work involved, <laughs> oh, I'm not entirely sure, um, but I'll give it a go. And again, part of the con the concept for doing the, the catalogue was to, to make it feel like games were still being released, so that all of these games in the next year or two would be games that I would make, as if you know they were being brought out by Sega themselves. So, moving on... <laughs> There's the cartridge. Again, most of the time, cartridges and cart labels for masses and games were very uh, simple. They had the grid pattern, and they often, particularly the ones from Sega, they would have just had white text here with the name. Now, I always found that a little boring, so I decided to change it and actually use the game logo for the the kind of the the, the label as well. Um, the one thing I find, I found it very hard to get labels that would fit the cartridge and that would retain colour. 
the best I could do was get ones that were a bit too big and cut them down and even then the color is not correct and mm, it's it's the one part that I'm, I'm not that pleased with really I even find that the top here will every so often lift up so you have to kind of press it back down and it, it sticks back down but it's I don't know why it does that it bugs me anyway and then finally the manual which as I said earlier took an absolute load of time and effort to do um, it's full color but I decided to um, to use the kind of fonts and the text color that was in keeping with the rest of the European Mass System games that kind of pseudo bluey purple color that they had I liked adding though the color characters and the color screenshots because I, I always felt that the, the Sega Master System manuals were very dry and dull without a bit of color in them. A part of the, what took me so long to do the manual was I tried to equalize all the text. For example, there it's, it they're all aligned. And as I was doing the manual in PaintShop Pro Seven, it doesn't support equalized text. So I had to equalize every single line by hand in the, and it was just a painstaking process to be correct. And you'd have to measure everything up through kerning process. It was it was not something I would repeat. So for future reproductions I'm probably not going to do a manual. At least not unless I can come up with a way of it's streamlining the process. It was just way too long. And at the end, then I kind of, you know, copied the old warning, you know, do not bend the cartridge, do not, you know, submerge in liquids and whatnot, and the high scores table. So I was actually happy with how it came out, all told. It just was a lot of work. So while in future I will definitely, you know, try and create nice looking boxes and, and whatnot, I don't think I'll do another manual. Finally, I thought I'd give you a bit of a look at what I'm currently working on. My next reproduction is actually going to be a platformer as well, and it's Super by 4. Here's the prototype image work that I have for the cover art. Um, I've actually based it on the Super by 3 image because it was much clearer, so I could get a, a nicer print out of it. I did try and actually remove the Korean text there, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't looking well, so I had to leave it. And again, the back of the box. Now, of course, I have no idea what what this was all about, as it was in Korean. And information on on story is very, very scant on the web. So I just made up my own story. As the game is, as you, you can possibly tell out like, from the screenshots, I'm not too sure how clear it is. It's it's basically a Super Mario Brothers ripoff, and this time they've taken a lot of uh, graphical styling from Super Mario World with the bullet bill and. Um, the castles and at the bottom there, the, the Forest of Illusion style look. So, I decided to base the story of uh, Superboy as if it was some sort of, you know, Mario ripoff. And I start there with the evil war clan are at it again. This time they've invaded the Mycelium Kingdom, a type of mushroom, and have started running amok, and so on and so forth. Not only that, but they have captured Princess Rosella Plum too. So, you know, the, again, one of the challenges with doing a reproduction is making a compelling, you know, product. I've seen other reproductions online, and some of them are of amazing quality. One that I actually bought um, from Play Generation, Digger Chan, is is like a, a totally superb product. If if you've seen it on the shelves, you know, during you know the late eighties and nineties. It would not be at a place at all. In fact, it's it's better quality than most of the releases because of the full color manual. Whereas there's places like the NES dumps and a lot of eBay sellers, they try and pass off reproductions that are just, frankly, quick cash-ins is what I would consider them. And now, I know a lot of people are trying to do it in some cases to make profit, and in my case, I'm not because I want to add them to my own personal collection. But at the end of the day, if you're not making a manual, it's it's not as big an involvement or a big of an effort to, to to make a template, which I did for the for the base, you know, the grids and the the logo spacings and whatnot, and then to repopulate them per each product. So you'd expect a better product. 
I mean, I've seen some of them where the, the back of the box, they've got like about two sentences in, in massive font just to fill the space, but it looks rubbish. And even worse, the prices a lot of eBayers charge. Um, it's very topical at the moment because I was just reading through the Sega 8-bit forums and someone had posted some Smurfs 2 reproductions and Guzzler reproductions. They were looking for over a hundred quid for them, which is frankly scandalous, particularly given that they weren't even, well in the case of Guzzler, well, there was a bit of work involved in because they would have had to create a cover for it, but the Smurfs too, they just printed the existing image, they didn't have to do anything. So uh, it grinds my gears I suppose to see people trying to shill off, you know, cheap products as because the original is rare. But anyway, in my case, I just want to do this for myself, and if others are interested, so be it. Uh, I did actually trade away a couple of Sonic Triple Troubles with a couple of four members, uh, but that was very much a private thing and you know trading thing. So they they're obviously aware of what they want, and I was happy that that they were interested in it all the same. But I didn't want to advertise that. Hey, look, I'm selling these, and this is gonna you know, make me a fortune, because obviously it isn't. So in the future I'll probably do another video when I finish my Superboy reproduction and perhaps have an update as well what the next one will be. I don't think I'll do a manual for Superboy because as I said it takes too much effort unless someone can inform me of a better way of doing it. I'm sure there is. Until next time